Welcome to this training video designed to acquaint you with Rockwell Automatic Slack Adjuster Installation and Maintenance. We're going to begin with a description of basic ASA operation. We'll cover the product enhancements made to Rockwell ASAs, but more importantly, how they benefit you. Next, we'll discuss ASA selection criteria for different brake applications, including spline size, piston color, and correct slack length. Then, we'll show you proper installation of Rockwell ASAs using clearance and installation templates. Since most problems can be headed off by thorough inspection and maintenance, we'll describe the simple procedures for keeping Rockwell ASAs in good working order. We'll even be troubleshooting a couple of items. And remember, always refer to Rockwell's maintenance manual, 4B, which covers these subjects. At Rockwell, we strive to continually improve and refine the performance and quality of our products. Rockwell has manufactured and supplied automatic slack adjusters since 1975 and they offer reduced maintenance costs by virtually eliminating the time-consuming chore of routine periodic manual brake adjustments which leads to less vehicle downtime. They're easily maintained and there's potential for improved lining life and safer operation. Also they offer easy installation for retrofit. All right, let's get right to the program and look at ASA operation. The purpose of automatic slack adjusters is to compensate for brake lining wear. Rockwell does this by controlling the length of the stroke of the air chamber push rod. After all, chamber stroke is what roadside inspectors check when checking for brake adjustment. Rockwell ASAs are installed at a specified working angle for proper clearance between the linings and the drum or rotor. This clearance is different between drum and disc brakes. Brake lining wear gradually increases that clearance, causing the air chamber push rod to move a greater distance to apply the brakes. If the push rod stroke extends beyond the designated limit, the ASA clevis raises the slack adjuster actuator rod and the piston, which lifts the actuator. Now, note that there are several different piston lengths for different ASA applications. This length is critical for proper stroke length of your automatic slack adjuster. I'll show you how to look for this a little later on. Spiral serrations on the actuator and the pawl ride over each other repositioning the actuator on the stationary pawl. Actual adjustment occurs during the return stroke of the push rod, which limits application forces on the adjusting parts. This adjustment will occur only when required. When the brakes are released, the chamber push rod fully retracts, the slack adjuster arm returns, and the ASA worm gear rotates counterclockwise. The actuator rod and the piston push the actuator downward. The actuator in its new position with the stationary paw rotates via the spiral serrated teeth. Rotation of the actuator in its downward travel causes the worm gear to rotate. In turn, the worm gear causes the splined gear to advance. The gear rotates the camshaft to reset the push rod stroke to its correct length. The excessive distance between the brake linings and the drum or the rotor is thus reduced to recommended specifications. Through the years, based on customer input, Rockwell has made a number of product enhancements to improve performance, quality, and durability of the automatic slack adjuster. They are new Teflon coated and reduced squeeze O-rings to reduce internal torque which provides easier mechanical operation of the slack. A new raised lip worm shaft seal with greater bearing contact to the worm to improve sealing and prevent corrosion. For example, when the slack is mounted upside down, water cannot seep into the seal area. A grease groove and holes added to the ASA gear splines to improve lubrication and prevent corrosion and wear of ASA and camshaft splines. 
This makes it easier to remove the ASA if required. Now this will be on all slacks except for the ones with 10 spline gears. A spiral groove added to the worm shaft journal to improve lubrication and prevent corrosion. But some very noticeable improvements are boot straps that are color matched to the pistons to enable the technician or parts man to visually identify the internal piston without disassembly. Remember we said piston length determines the push rod travel before adjustment occurs. So be sure to choose the correct piston color for your chamber application. It's very important to consider chamber size when selecting the slack adjuster part number from the part list. Four different actuator pistons are used to adjust air chamber stroke length. Generally, shorter length slack adjusters used with type 20 and smaller air chambers require red pistons. Yellow pistons are typically used for drive axle and trailer axle applications with drum brakes. There are green and blue pistons used on disc brakes for drive axles. Now remember, there are a couple of other piston applications, so be sure to follow your OEM specifications for correct piston color. Although Rockwell ASAs fit a broad range of truck and trailer applications, this latest housing contour revision allows us to fit even more applications. To meet a variety of clearance situations, we offer two pole locations. They're left-handed and right-handed, used together, as well as an unhanded version. Rockwell ASAs perform because they're built tough with a torque rating of 30,000 inch pounds. They're sealed against contaminants with positive lubrication to all moving parts for dependable, consistent operation and lower maintenance costs. Rockwell Simple Mechanical Ratchet Type Adjuster does not utilize the slip clutches, which tend to wear out. Rockwell ASAs are available for steer, drive, and trailer axles. You can specify Rockwell ASAs for retrofits, as well as original equipment. Except for installation templates, no special tools are needed for service or installation, so they're easy to install on the field. Road proven by billions of service miles, Rockwell ASAs ensure even consistent brake performance while improving both efficiency and productivity, two of the main forces driving business today. All right. Now let's go out to the garage to see how to properly install and maintain Rockwell automatic slack adjusters. In this segment on selecting proper slack adjusters, we'll discuss preliminary safety precautions, check installation clearance with a template, determine the size needed for a new slack adjuster, spline size, piston size, and we'll cover the use of the correct installation template. Let's take a minute to talk about safety. Always block the wheels before you get under any vehicle so it can't roll and cause personal injury. When you want to remove or replace a slack adjuster, prepare the vehicle by raising and supporting it with safety stands. Never work under a vehicle supported only by jacks. They can slip and cause personal injury. Also, Remember to wear safety glasses when working on the vehicle. Clearance templates are available to determine if a Rockwell automatic slack adjuster will fit your application and whether you need a paw on the side or on the front. Follow the directions printed on the template, but remember, the adjusted stroke will be shorter than the figure on the chart. If you don't have a template, check clearance by rotating the new slack adjuster by hand during installation to ensure unobstructed travel for the entire push rod stroke. Your OEM has designed a system that's safe and efficient. So when replacing any component, follow your OEM standards. Choose a new slack adjuster with the same length as the old one. For example, if you remove a five and a half inch manual slack adjuster, replace it with a five and a half inch ASA. Rockwell ASAs come in lengths of five, five and a half, six, six and a half and seven inches. If the sizes on one side of an axle don't match the opposite side, return the vehicle to original specs by choosing proper components that do match. When ordering a slack adjuster, choose the correct spline size for your application. The splines will be either 10 or 24 count with a one and a quarter inch diameter camshaft, 
10 or 28 count splines with a one and a half inch diameter camshaft or 37 count splines with a one and five eighths inch diameter camshaft. Choose the proper piston color for your application based on chamber size and ASA length as discussed previously. Note that a Rockwell ID tag on the slack will show you whether this slack is for a disc or a drum brake application. A template is used for proper installation setup. Instructions are located right on the template. Utilize the correct installation template of the four that are available. Use dark brown for trucks or tractors with drum brakes. Use tan for trailers with drum brakes. Use yellow for all disc brakes with straight clevises. And use green with air disc brakes that have an offset clevis. Remember, it's critical to use the correct template for your application. Initial setup is essential to good operating performance. In this segment, we'll show you how to properly install the slack adjusters. To begin, check for wear and corrosion on the camshaft or power shaft, bushings and seals, and replace as necessary. A foundation break in good working condition is essential. Check the air chamber return spring for tension by applying the service brake several times. If the push rod doesn't return completely, replace the return spring or the entire chamber. Choose the correct template since we're working on tractor cam brakes, we'll be using dark brown. There you go, right? After selecting the proper slack adjuster, begin the installation. The standard clevis is a straight, one-piece threaded design. An offset design offers installation flexibility and is usually found on front axles. A quick connect clevis is used by some OEMs, though it can't be separated after assembly and servicing differs. A new one-piece clevis comes with the slack adjuster, and there are two different clevis sizes based on chamber pushrod size. For chamber sizes 9, 12, or 16, a half-inch clevis with 20 threads per inch is used. For larger capacity chambers, 20, 24, or 30, a 5 8 inch clevis with 18 threads per inch is used. Compress and fully cage the spring parking brake. If the brake is not completely caged or enclosed, when the clevis and slack are installed and adjusted, the slack adjuster will not adjust the brake correctly. Make sure there's no air pressure in the service half of the air chamber. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's service instructions when working on spring brake chambers, or it could activate and cause injury. Now, let's go through ASA installation step by step. First, to remove the manual slack adjuster, back the brakes off with the manual adjusting nut. Remove the clevis pin. Remove the snap ring. Remove the slack adjuster body. Remove the old clevis from the push rod. The old jam nut remains on the push rod. Install the new clevis on the push rod, but don't tighten the jam nut. Position the correct installation template, making sure the hole which measures arm length is centered on the camshaft. Install the large clevis pin through the labeled hole. If the small clevis pin hole does not line up, turn the clevis on the chamber push rod and recheck. When the holes are aligned, Lock the jam nut by tightening with a wrench. Remove the template. Check for proper engagement of the clevis on the air chamber push rod. Thread engagement should be at least one half inch, but not more than one eighth inch of the rod extending through the clevis. Trim the rod or install a new push rod as necessary. Care should be exercised to prevent diaphragm damage. Lubricate the splines of the slack adjuster gear and camshaft with anti-seize compound. 
Use Rockwell Lubricant 0-637, Southwest SA 8249496 or equivalent. Install the slack adjuster on the splined camshaft. Install the spacing washers. Install the snap ring. Keep a maximum clearance of 62 thousandths of an inch between the washer and snap ring. Now it's very important to remove the pawl assembly to prevent possible damage to the actuator. Using a wrench, turn the manual adjusting nut counterclockwise to rotate the slack adjuster until the hole in the arm of the ASA aligns with the large hole in the clevis. Before installing the clevis pins, you can double check the clearance by rotating the slack adjuster with your hand. to removing the manual slacks, installing Rockwell ASAs, and setting proper brake adjustment. Now, let's go on to minor inspection and maintenance. Okay, your Rockwell ASAs are installed, adjusted, and providing good service on the highway. But remember, automatic does not mean maintenance free. So next, we'll cover minor procedures for inspecting the boot and lubricating. To keep Rockwell ASAs in top condition, follow an inspection schedule based on the strictest of three chassis lubrication schedules. The one used by your company, the one recommended by the chassis manufacturer, or at least four times during the life of the brake lines. For details on inspection and lubrication procedures, refer to Rockwell Maintenance Manual 4B. The basics for minor inspection are check for proper stroke, inspect the boot for cuts or damage, and lube the adjuster. For preventive maintenance, begin by again checking the free stroke 
or applied stroke of the slack adjuster as shown previously. If the stroke is correct, the slack adjuster is functioning properly. Now let me note that it is normal to see variations from break to break during the applied stroke. It can be plus or minus one eighth inch. Now let's look at some other minor maintenance points. Check the boot for cuts or damage. If the boot is okay, go on to lubricate the slack adjuster. If torn, the boot can be replaced. Using an approved Rockwell grease listed in maintenance manual 4B, lube at the Zerk fitting until new grease flows from the pressure relief valve in the Paul cap screw. Newer slack adjusters with lubrication holes in the camshaft gear should be lubed until grease can be seen coming from the spline area as well. To sum up minor inspections, simply check the boot, lube the adjuster, and check the free stroke. That's all there is to it. Now let's look at major inspection and adjustment. When you reline the brakes, in addition to the minor checks that you just made, be sure to remove and inspect the pawl and condition of the grease inside the slack. I'd like to make one other point. It's important to note that for automatic slacks to function properly, the same lining material should be used on both brakes of the axle. To avoid damage to the pawl teeth, remove the pawl before you turn the manual adjusting nut and don't reinstall the pawl until after brake adjustment. Check for dry or contaminated lube. If the lube is okay, then reline and adjust the brakes. Reinstall the pawl and lubricate as you did in the minor inspection. Okay, let's troubleshoot a couple of items. What if you have a slack adjuster with a stroke that's too long? Since correct angle is so important, check the ASA with the proper template and reset the installation angle if required. If the stroke is long, it may be because the spring brake air chamber is not fully releasing. If so, check the spring brake assembly following the procedures and safety precautions outlined by the chamber manufacturer. Remember to check the tie wrap for the correct piston color as we discussed earlier. The pawl assembly could be damaged, so remove the pawl and check for wear or grease contamination. If a quick connect collar is used, check for excessive wear between the clevis and the collar using a gap gauge. If the gap is more than 60 thousandths of an inch, replace the clevis and the collar assembly with a threaded clevis. Check the jam nut on the push rod. If the quick connect collar is loose, it could shift the slack adjuster angle out of spec causing a problem of long stroke. Also, with the pawl removed and clevis disconnected, check for free and easy rotation of the slack in both directions. Correct the angle by readjusting the position of the clevis on the push rod until the small pin is completely visible. Retighten the jam nut. For one half inch rods, torque between 20 and 30 foot pounds. For 5 eighths inch rods, torque between 25 and 50 foot-pounds. Adjust the slack adjuster manually to the proper stroke. Reinstall the pawl assembly and torque between 15 and 20 foot-pounds. Here's a slack adjuster with a torn boot, which means that the interior of the adjuster may have been contaminated. Remove the pawl and check for contaminated grease. If contaminated, you should clean the internal parts and replace the seals. To do this, remove the ASA and carry it to a bench for disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly. These procedures are in your Rockwell Maintenance Manual 4B. In this videotape, we've covered the operation of Rockwell's automatic slack and its new features. We've discussed selection of the proper slack adjuster. We've shown proper ASA installation. We've described minor and major inspection, maintenance procedures, and some troubleshooting tips. But remember the vital part that you play. While adjustment of Rockwell ASAs is automatic, inspection and maintenance are not. With proper installation, inspection, and maintenance, Rockwell ASAs will continue to provide value, performance, and reliability for many years to come.